my beautiful Sufis, I love them. They just, there's so much about life that they were passionate and loved. And this is from Hafez, from the 13th century. He says, for we have not come here to take prisoners or to confine our wondrous spirits. We have come here to express ever and ever and ever more deeply our divine courage, freedom, and light. We are here to express. You know, it was a, actually Rumi a little earlier than Hafez in the 12th century. Rumi was the one who used dance as a real connection to spirit. He said he just started moving and twirling until he totally surrendered his ego, his attachment to the small self. And he could merge and become that oneness with spirit. The hands, the feet, the heart, the mind of God to express through him. But if you understand and hear what he was saying in that dancing, it takes a surrender. And you know, all of us have had a conflict in ourselves about how we're going to show up in the world. Ernest Holmes, in the very first page of his 600 and some page textbook, says, freedom is our divine birthright. To everyone, not some people, everybody, everywhere. Freedom is our divine birthright. And that seed of freedom is planted in the innermost being of everyone. We must discover it for ourselves. It's like peeling the onion away to find that sense of freedom within us. That freedom to express and be our true selves. Because we aren't here by accident. You and I are here on purpose. We've chosen to be here at these difficult times for a reason, and we might not know completely yet. But it's our job, I believe, every day to take time to listen to that inner spirit, that voice, that guiding, healing voice of spirit within us that guides us what's our part to do. How are we to show up now? You know, in this big old world that we have right here, the conflict between self-interest, as you were speaking of, Mary, and cooperation has been a struggle through civilizations and a struggle for philosophers over all the years. How do we balance, hint, hint, our self-interest with the cooperation of all? As we awaken spiritually, we recognize and know that we live in this interconnected world. We live in a symbiotic relationship, even though it doesn't seem like it. We live in a relationship with all of life. We need each other. And our journey, this sense of freedom, I love this, what it says. This is what Ernest Holmes says. This sense of freedom is we have the opportunity. Now, this is very, very, mm, it's potent right now. We have the opportunity to see beyond the facts to the harmony. Can you feel that word? To see beyond all the facts that we get in life. And being a debater, I know you can have facts on both sides that sound really good. But there's a harmony, a peace, a love that has to exist beneath all of that. And I believe when we talk of spiritual freedom, that's the freedom we're looking for. Spiritual freedom is a little different than personal freedom. But spiritual freedom is the freedom to see beyond what's going on in this human experience and know that there is something greater at work. Yes, we are each unique, individualized expression of the one power, the one creative potential, the one infinite intelligence that we call God. Yes, we are that individualized expression. And yes, we have a purpose. And yes, we're here for a reason. And yes, we're here to grow and expand and become. But we're not here to do it all, all or all at once. I picked up this book when I went to uh, Mark Nepo's workshop mm, some months ago. And it says, More Together Than Alone. And I didn't just pick up this book. I couldn't help 
but having a whole stack of them. So I finally got to this book uh, last night, and I started looking at this book, and I want to tell you one of the... Um, just one of the things, I wrote a whole bunch of things down, but that's for a class that <clears throat> we'll be doing shortly, as soon as I uh, find out how to meld this into a you know, four week or six week class, we'll be doing a Zoom class together. But <clears throat> it says, gosh, it brings a lot of emotion out of me and it's only two sentences, but it says, don't ask the mountain to move. Just take a pebble each time you visit. Things can't change that fast. Change within us and in our world takes time. Changing, repairing the world is a beautiful, endless job. And it's ours. We have a piece to play. So you can decide if you want the mountain moved, you just take a piece each time, whether it's something in your own mind, layers again, taking, <clears throat> discarding old thoughts that don't work with us, or whatever it is, discarding all of that, or if we want to build something new, you know, because we have that capability within us right now. We can create something amazing, creative, wonderful, and beautiful, like a gigantic castle, or a forest, or a garden, or a library, whatever it is, we can build something amazing out of our creativity. Or we have the power to burn it all down. It's in all of us, not some of us. That lower and higher consciousness belongs to us all. We can't point out there that something's going on that we don't have in us, whether it's beautiful and magnificent and amazing, it's in us. Anything we admire about somebody else belongs to us too. But the same goes when we look in that, the fingers of blame and shame and anger. Yes, there might be something calling us to do. It doesn't mean we just sit around and pretend it's not there. But blaming and shaming someone else when everything belongs in us, we need to be asking, what do I need to heal? How do I need to put that seed of newness into life? That seed of love and compassion and knowing that there's something more at work. Suffering is not God-ordained. The universe only wants us to be happy and to succeed at all the good and right things. That's all Spirit wants for us. But the possibility comes when we have that freedom. We have the freedom to choose, self-choice. We have that freedom every moment of every day. And our big challenge is, are we going to uh, uh, have the freedom to choose the thoughts of lower vibration, to get into the herd mentality, to look for what's wrong instead of what's right, to criticize, our, criticize ourselves for what we're doing or others for what they're doing, or are we going to reach, and it takes energy and it takes strength, or are we going to reach for something better? You know, I know what you're thinking. How do we do this in a time of a total emotional roller coaster? How do we do that? Have any of you been on the roller coaster this week? I have. It's hard, but it's not to feel bad about. Life is emotions. And you know, if we shut off our fear, our pain, our depression, our guilt, our anger, we can't just shut off that. We shut off a good portion of our other emotions. We have to learn how to embrace them all and not let our emotions run or control us, but use them to say, what's going, what's going on inside of me? They're, they're gifts to find out, where am I right now? We need to learn from them and learn to mm, handle them. And we learn to, as Pema Chodron says, make friends with fear. And Elizabeth Gilbert, in her book, Big Magic, says, we need to commingle fear and passion to be able to do both and, to bring that balance. Does that make sense? Instead of letting fear or upset or anger overtake us, we need the freedom to express, let that fear, ooh, get out of my comfort zone, ooh, I'm stuck and I don't want to, ooh, I feel that divine urge, but I don't want to do it. Does anybody ever feel like that? Because I know what it feels like. We'd rather not do it. It's just easier to stay back, but that's not what we're called to do. Take that one pebble away. Make an opening right now to 
let the Spirit move through us. First of all, we must become resilient. And resiliency means to really take that check-in. Hmm, where am I out of alignment with good, with God, with love? Where am I out of alignment? Hmm, I need to have faith and trust that life is good. Where am I not forgiving? Where am I holding on to resentment and anger? Not making the space. Because when we're doing that, we're holding on to the lower emotions. We can only become resilient to the outer life when we're resilient in our inner life, first of all. And then we come to the place of self-realization. Now the self-awareness is what I was talking about with the emotions. We have to see where we are, what's going on, what's happening in our life, and be honest with them. Learn to deal with our emotions, talk to them, heal them, understand Understand them. But then, once we've done that, we have to realize that self awareness will only take us to right action. It'll lead us on that, pay, play, on that path of what is ours to do. Where, where are we to go? Where am I to go? It'll lead us on the right path. But then we must remember and appreciate who we are and how we're made. We have one mind two hands and two feet. We need to be used. So our prayer, it may just be picking up that one pebble, that one stone, but use me. How am I to be used today? What am I to do that I can express? Express God in the greatest way. Or heal my false thoughts about life and myself. We want to move to the upper realm where we can hmm, look at life in a whole different perspective, a whole different view. We're not judging, but we're looking. To, what's mine to do? How may I be used to bring a greater expression to life? Here's what Hafez said. Hafez asked a bird, how can you fly with the gravity of all this darkness. I'm sure a lot of us feel like that. How can we fly with all of this darkness? And the bird, she responded, love lifts me up. I'm lifted up by love. That love that makes us see that we are all part of this one whole, that we are all connected, that there is a goodness that wants us to grow and expand, and we won't have to wear masks forever. We just won't. It's just a passing phase right now because we want to help things get better, lift the energy, li heal the world together. So we know that there's something more at work right now that wants us, that wants us right now to be used. Please close your eyes in this moment as we join into a prayer and simply knowing that the greatness of God, the love of God, the divine creativity and potentiality of God lives within each and every one of us right here in this moment knowing that we are greater than we can see right in this moment, that life is better than we can know in this moment. There's something good at work right here and right now. This moment is a moment to ex celebrate and to express the goodness we have to be part of the solution, part of the solution that's not only healing us, our own insecurities, our own uh, stumbling blocks, but also this same understanding and awareness is healing those around us and our world. There is a goodness at work right now and we're part of it. I know that in community we are stronger than we are alone. I know that as we, as the in-spirit community, join our hearts and minds in knowing that we are better together. We create something new, that we have the power to up-level, up uplift the consciousness in ourselves, in each other, in this world, that we can celebrate this moment. We can lift up and celebrate right now and say we are free to be our best and ever-evolving selves. As I know that for you, and I know that for me, I know it for every person in the world. And I let that vision 
of greatness and connection and goodness and healing. I release that to the infinite mind of love, knowing it's returned to each and every one of us in a unique and individualized way. We are here on purpose. We are both blessed and a blessing. We say thank you, thank you, thank you, God. And so it is. Please know how much you're loved. Thank you for being here during these difficult times. It makes life so much better. I love you all. Thank you.